So initially, I actually was living in Saudi Arabia. Uh, I was born there. I studied my high school there. And after that, I went to Lebanon, where I studied in American University of Beirut uh, for my bachelor's. My dad at that time was still in Saudi Arabia, and he was part of uh, the civil engineers that helped in the management of building KAUST. And he told me about KAUST. Uh, and that's actually how I heard of it initially. And I got excited. I'm like, oh, wow, yeah, let me try and apply there. And let me try my chances with the masters. And let's see how it goes. I applied. I got accepted. I started my masters in KAUST. I enjoyed it a lot. I liked the advisor the faculty, the environment, the research opportunities, and I continued my PhD. Fantastic. So going back to your undergraduate degree mm -hmm. at AUB, what yeah. did you study? I studied physics. And um, initially when I studied physics, I thought that I, at that time, that I'm going to be the biggest theoretical physicist working on particle physics and so on. And then suddenly, like, you know, with like years and looking at how technology has evolved and so on, I started getting interested in nanotechnology. And living in Lebanon, where we have basically a lot of uh, energy problems, we, don't, we still don't have electricity 24-7. Uh, my main concern at that time was like, oh, wow, maybe I can use nanotechnology, this kind of process to build energy harvesting devices, like whether it was solar cells or like piezoelectric based devices to implement them in my country. And that's basically what really pushed me to go in that field at that time. So for me, honestly, I always went with the flow. Whatever I felt at that time, what intrigued me, what interested me, I went on that road. And I always figured out my next step while I was learning. And I had a very funny story of how like, I ended up here because I actually never had a proper plan that, hey, OK, I'm going to be here, or that's exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, it's the quite opposite. Every time I had a plan to do something, it turned out to be completely different, but it turned out to be for the best and for something that I liked more. Um, I thought that I would enter, I don't know, I was like, my whole life I was into in two, in two things, arts and sciences. Um, and I was always fascinated by like how things work and so on. So at least I knew that I wanted to embark on, on that like lane of studies. But I never thought, honestly, that I would be doing all this exciting stuff. Like I thought, like, OK, I'm going to study engineering. I'm going to know how things are built. But I had no clue how things were. I actually didn't know how research was conducted until I went to KAUST. But yeah, at that point, I'd go to industry. That This is kind of the road that I've seen my family went on kind of uh, around me in Lebanon. That's what people did. So, but yeah, things change. And here I am <laughs> doing like innovative technologies and thinking, hopefully, about startups in the future. And your interest in the arts, are you into music or theatre? Do you play an instrument? Tell us about that passion. Yeah, so I'm interested in both uh, like arts as in uh, drawing and painting, as well as in music. So I do play the guitar. And I mainly do a lot of uh, charcoal drawings. And uh, yeah, and honestly, like working in nanofabrication, I always tell people, I don't consider it as an engineering job per se, where you're just like sitting on the desk or like, putting things together, I consider it as if I'm doing art as well. Like for some reason, this is how my imagination works. Whenever I'm thinking about like a new device design or how am I going to integrate things, I think of them as like art, the same way that I think about colors or like strokes and so on. That's how I do also my designs. So it's pretty similar for me. That's how I implement both together. How is it that you define your career now? Um, so right now at this stage, I feel I'm always learning. So I cannot say I reached a point where I'm done or at like I'm a very professional level. I do think that you keep on learning at any position that you're at. So I do feel like I'm still a student in a way. Um, right now at Stanford, I am working with a marine scientist, Professor Barbara Block. And I'm being co-advised by Professor Zinanbao, who is in chemical engineering. And my purpose being here is trying to pursue a prototype that I initially developed at KAUST in my last year of PhD and to bring it more closer to market, to an actual product, and how you would work, say, in the industry to develop a product that's robust enough. That's how I'm trying to do right now here. So initially, you came to the US. You were, in, uh, you were at Caltech uh, doing your first postdoc, yes. and then you ended up at Stanford. I mean, Caltech and Stanford, uh, I mean, world's best universities. That's pretty incredible. Yeah. What were you doing at Caltech? Yeah. So 
I was actually very lucky. I'm very grateful that I had the opportunity to first go to Caltech and then be here at Stanford. Um, so it was actually very different um, experiences that I had. When I joined Caltech, I joined the medical engineering group. Um, so I, I'm interested in like developing different kind of prototypes or wearable devices using flexible electronics. And I'm now really restricted by applications. I've worked on applications that are in biomedical like healthcare monitoring. I've worked on stuff for agriculture monitoring and even in marine, like what I'm doing right now here. So at Caltech, it was mainly like biomedical devices monitoring. Uh, and how I ended up and shifted here is that actually I've been seen like in the news by Professor Barbara Block, who saw my work that I did in the PhD about the marine sensors that I developed. And she was very interested that they invited me here to give a seminar talk uh, in uh, this eWare initiative. So there is an initiative program here called um, For Wearable Technologies that was founded by uh, Professor Zinan Bao. And they invited me basically to give a talk in front of like professional people who are in the field who work on different kind of wearables to explain how I translated the technology of wearables and flexible electronics into the marine realm. And this was basically a first of its kind. And when I presented the talk, uh, Professor Barbara was actually really impressed by the prototype that we developed, and she has she's seen the potential of it, and she really wanted us to take it again and really try to bring it to market because for her, these are the kind of products that really help the world. So she's an ecologist. She works on basic studying the ocean, trying to study different ways of um, global climate changes and how it's impacting our world, how we can do better. And to do that, you need to really monitor the ocean in different ways. And she really has seen that our product has really a potential to enable further and better investigation than what they have been doing now at a way lower cost and has making it even more accessible. Um, initially, I actually applied to material sciences as a master's in, uh, in KAUST. I came from a physics background and at my university in the Middle East, it's not as developed as anywhere else. So I didn't know about all the other kind of uh, sub-disciplines or why you would study, I just kind of focused, okay, I talked to a couple of my advisors there, I'm like, I'm interested in nanotechnology, like try to, to know how, I'm a very applied person, so at least I knew that. I wanted to shift to something applied, and I wanted to develop these energy harvesting devices. And they recommended me, oh yeah, that means you need to study device physics and materials, so go in material sciences. And my whole life, before KAUST, I imagined electrical engineering, just that person who's sitting in front of like all these PCB boards, IC components, putting things together and just like designing circuits on the computer. And that's it. I never imagined anything beyond that. And maybe if you tell me what I hate about electrical engineering is that part. <laughs> I'm not that person to put me in one place to, to just do that. Um, but then, actually, I was really lucky that when I started in KAUS, I started interacting with students. And they, they were asking me, what's your passion? What do you want to do? And why you chose material sciences and so on? And I discovered that I was in the wrong. If you want to say in the wrong, but there's no wrong. That's what I'm going to say. But they told me, if you really want to know how to develop devices, like what I do now, to pure fabrication, there is this track at KAUS, electrical engineering, but in the electrophysics track. And Actually, I actually like changed that I worked. I identified Professor Muhammad Hussein, who was my advisor, and I loved his work, what he was doing, his passion, his vision about electronics. And I switched, and I went to electrical engineering. After that, I really learned that it's really not about the major that you study. It's really about the research that you're doing. Pick the right advisor for you that has that's in line with your thoughts and in line with your vision of what, what you want to do and what you want to learn to achieve that. Could you talk a little bit about your experience in the labs or working on projects at KAUST um, during your master's phase that might have equipped you in how you do your work now at Stanford? So while I was in my graduate studies, um, I mean, so I'm going to talk a bit about my master's, but I have better examples for my, like during the PhD, what I went through. During my master's, I was mainly fascinated by like the whole clean room facility that was there. I mean, honestly, now that I've even seen other places, I'm like, people at KAUS are really lucky to have what they have. And because of what we have, what we had at KAUS, really, we are able to build and train, uh, train ourselves to become the best. 
So I was really grateful for that opportunity and that really opened doors for me to really be even more imaginative about the stuff that I can do because you don't feel restricted. You feel you have everything at the tip of your fingers. It's just about you and your imagination now, what, how you want to use it. And then going more through like my PhD, I started working on projects where it was very easy for us because it's a smaller community to work with people in environmental engineering, for example, in the marine sciences. I had one project, for example, where I worked with Professor Mark Tester uh, on sensors for agricultural monitoring. So I actually, it was a very fun phase because me being an electrical engineer, I was now there going to the greenhouse learning about how barley plants are grown and how to keep them alive and how I'm able to develop these sensors that can be very compatible with their growth and monitor how they grow and stuff like this. So it was a really interesting thing because now you can like really merge multiple disciplines together and it really makes your career or your studies even more fun. Um, the second example was actually when I started with the marine sensors. It also also started with KAUST, with uh, Professor Carlos Duarte. And he started this initiative where he wanted to bring people from different engineering disciplines to think about new ways to develop technology for the marine world. And this was also a very new experience and it really kept me alive because I like learning new things. So I learned about the marine world. I started studying different species, like marine species, uh, understanding how you can develop these sensors for them, how they survive. So you really have to also learn about their disciplines to be able to develop the engineering for them. So, and without basically cows having all these departments or all these people like close together, I don't think that, that would have been as possible or as easy to do. How was your PhD experience then? Never trade my, my time at Kaust, like in a million years. It was honestly like the best choice that I've ever made, at least for me personally. And whether it was from research perspective, like, you know, obviously like the whole uh, facilities that are available to us, the education that was provided to us, it's all top notch. And, but it's not really just about that. That was a very like, exciting time for me because I like multidisciplinarity, so I enjoyed my research with Professor Hussein because we worked on different things, exciting things, and real life prototyping as well, which I loved. But at the same time, it really built my entrepreneurial side. Um, whether it was CAUST who built students to think in that way, that if you have a project or like you have a good idea, go and try to work with the entrepreneurship department. Try to make a patent, like protect your ideas, try to push them further. So we had a lot of that coming from CAUST. As well, it prepared us, yeah, to be very outgoing. Like a lot of times you imagine engineers that they're just like sitting, developing things on their own in their labs and not interacting but not at cost, not with my experience. It was the opposite. It was like, go out, talk about your research. They, we would be sent to like exhibitions to, like for example, I want to like sensors exhibitions here in San Jose. We've demonstrated our prototypes in CES, which is like the biggest consumer electronics show. And you have the opportunity to just network with people, talk with people, whether from academics or industry, or people who are building their startups. So you feel you are really part of this even bigger vision and really, this has been only true because of KAUST. Um, I've met other people who haven't had this opportunity as much because of maybe their universities, where it's only about like academia and focus on that and finish their studies. So I was really grateful for the opportunity because of KAUST. And you seem to have been very successful um, as you were at KAUST here uh, at Stanford. You were talking earlier about uh, winning an award. Yeah. Are you able to talk a little bit about that award? Yeah. Uh, so basically that award was on the marine sensors that I'm continuing right now at Stanford. Uh, so basically what we did is that we transformed current state-of-the-art marine tags that are used on animals. We transformed them from these like bigger, bulky and heavy devices to something very thin, stretchable and biocompatible. Instead of having to saw it or drill it on the animals, now you can just literally like put it with like some kind of biocompatible glue on the animals on the surface of their skin. And it's very reliable. It stays there and goes in the ocean. And it can monitor the quality of the water, like pH levels, salinity levels, as well as temperature and the depth profile of the animal. Now, basically, 
we won at CS, so this, is, this was our second time that we present that prototype at CS, and this was with, uh, with Professor Hossein that we won. So we actually have an invention disclosure on it, a patent, and we're commercializing the name under Bluefin tag. And they gave us a best of innovation for tech that is changing the world. And I believe we, 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 are, we were able to get this award because really there is nothing else out there. And just imagine if we are really able to bring this tag to the market, it's really going to change the way marine scientists and ecologists are studying the ocean. It's going to give them better ways of studying the deeper secrets of the ocean and smaller areas and areas that they couldn't study up until now to actually even put the tags on animals that are way smaller that they couldn't even study because different animals go to different depths in the ocean. So really, this is going to give us the opportunity to really discover a lot of things about our universe. And with that, that's how kind of you make impact. Well, that is incredible. Congratulations <laughs> Thank you so on much. that honor. Um, and I'm sure it's just the beginning yes. of many, many honors and also opportunities uh, for your work <laughs> to be taken forward. Uh, tell us about the next five years. What do you hope to accomplish professionally? So I take it one year at a time. <laughs> I'm that person, but, and the reason why I said that is because I learned that. I learned that it's always good to have motivation, that you want to make bigger things. And my motivation it is to make bigger things. And when I say to make bigger things, it's to really develop tech that's going to change the world. So I do have that motivation that's really pushing me to, to keep, to go, to go forward. However, I am not planning my steps of how to go there. I really think that really life takes you in ways that you cannot really plan for yourself. But what I do is that I'm always aware of opportunities that I'm getting around me. And whenever I see an opportunity, I take advantage of it. Whether it works for me, it's good. I'm moving forward. Even if it doesn't work for me, I learn from it and I keep pushing forward. So who knows where I'm going to be. Maybe I'll have a startup. Maybe I'm, I might be also like maybe joining industry, learning new skills that I didn't learn because there is a big gap between like working in academia and working in industry. And you really learn different kind of skill sets when you're in industry, how you manage projects and working with bigger teams and so on. I'm open to basically any opportunity that can make me grow as a researcher or as a person. As long as you're creating impact. As long as I'm creating impact. How it happens, it's a mystery of the, of the years.